and welcome to the Oxford Dim- Town Diaries. It's it's never going to get easy, <laughs> is it? We are your dynamic duo, Kelly Westbrook, Kimberly Smith. And yeah. obviously, I'm excited because I usually am yes. about- Is this uh, your favorite guest today? Every time it is. <laughs> so we have it's today true. with us Ashley Ross who is not only a friend of ours, Mm -hmm. but she is a wonderful community member. She lives in the village of Oxford. We are lucky enough to have had her on the village council, the DDA board. She still sits on our economic vitality committee. We tap her all the time for grants Mm -hmm. and anytime we need something, I feel like she pitches in. Yes. And she's a fun visitor that pops in on occasion to lighten our spirits. That's right. Welcome, Ashley. (laughs) Hi. Thank you for having me today. For sure. So we pretty much mentioned everything you do, and we're going to dig into it. But (laughs) tell us what you do in your spare time, like your full-time job. (laughs) Um, In my spare time, so work, um, I am a mom first and foremost. I think that's always the most important thing. That's part of why I started being involved in all of the community work that I've been doing, uh, because I want to make the world just a little bit better, or at least my slice of the world, better for my kids. So I think that's really what drew me to all of this. But my day job, I work in museums and nonprofits. So I am an associate director of collections and impact at the Marshall M. Frederick Sculpture Museum at Saginaw Valley State University. In case you wanted the longest title. (laughs) Wow. And we can't even get out our titles in the beginning. (laughs) That is awesome. She can can practice. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means. Absolutely. So really my background is working in museums. So I've worked in a variety from art museums to historical house museums. Um, And through that, I kind of got into some spots where I was able to work with philanthropy and foundations. And so gained a lot of experience writing, writing grants, um, seeing it from both sides of the angle. Um, And then I have also worked for the Michigan Humanities Council, which was just an absolutely fantastic position. Uh, which was funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities in part, and so really providing statewide humanities programs around the state as well as being a funder. So um, that kind of also played into all of the experience I have, I guess, with writing grants as well and trying to bring that type of work into Oxford. Yeah, you were impl- uh, implemental for the Consumers Energy Grant, for the T-Mobile Grant, some smaller grants that we were awarded, and also the Main Street Awards that are coming up mm-hmm. again, which is hard to believe. But h- how did you learn to write grants? I think so many businesses and different municipalities, they get overwhelmed by just the thought of it. Um, that's a really great question. So I always thought I was a really good writer. And then I worked at a place, which will remain unnamed, that told me I was a terrible writer. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely awful. Wanted me to take writing classes and everything. Um, and I kind of refused because I was cranky about the whole situation. And so um, that actually spearheaded, I guess, me just saying, like, don't don't tell me no. I'm not, I, that's mm-hmm. not that's the fastest way to get me to do something <laughs> is by to tell me, no, you can't do it. Um, and so I just kind of rolled with it. Um from writing grants, I guess for small businesses, it's really following the rules. Like a most, I will say most, not all, most grant applications tell you exactly what to say. And all you need to do is answer that. And that can seem really overwhelming when you have a lot to get out there or you're not ha- sure how to explain. Um, but I just always encourage people, like, you can do this. Like, what's the question? Tell me your answer. And we'll put it in there. And we can wordsmith and stuff later. But I promise, really anyone can do it at any level, as long as you, you know, here's your question, here's your answer, here's your question, and break it apart like that. Some of the other things I think that people get bogged down in is like budgeting and trying to figure out all these details. And so it's like a one step at a time. And then you have, especially when we're talking about downtown Oxford, you have your team down here now, you know, with the DDA, that if somebody has questions, they can come to you and ask them. And same thing, like, my house backs up to your office. So if you have another question that I that I can't imagine that both of you couldn't answer in some way, shape, or form, um, I'm right there. So it's not a scary thing. I think it can be intimidating because it's formal and forms and you're asking people for money and that mm-hmm. kind of never feels good. But um, I promise everyone can do it. Is What is your background in? What did you go to school for? 
anthropology. Oh, <laughs> See, I'm learning so much about you because, you know, you don't, you have such a vibrant personality that I did not connect that what you did for a living. Like I knew you did <laughs> something with apology is vibrant. <laughs> I'm in so, some circles. Yeah. yeah. It's not. So I actually went to school to be an archaeologist. Wow. And then I started digging in the dirt and realized I hated it. <laughs> so I figured I would deal with stuff after it was out of the ground, which led me to museums. And since I started working in museums, which I think I'm on my 17th, 18th year in my field, um, it's really just changed dramatically. And a lot of it has become a lot more community pay- based. So instead of just looking at an object or a painting and saying like, oh, that's nice. Like, how can it be like really implemented? I think that goes to like the murals in downtown. Like that is art that classifies as, you know, everything, the archways. Like for me, it's all bringing in this like this feeling of being home. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's kind of how I tie the museums. But yes, I, I don't enjoy digging in the dirt too much anymore. Okay. So. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so funny. And with, you know, you talked about the downtown and the murals, and that all runs through our committees that then goes on to the board. So you're on the Economic Vitality Committee. But can you tell us a little bit more about what it's like being a committee member and your experience? And we can talk about the committees um, in general, too. Yeah. Okay. So I have to pull it up because I'm not always the most articulate on these, what I'm talking. So we have the four committees, right? And so economic vitality. I had started on this committee when I was also serving on village council and on the DBA board. Um went to a meeting or two and then at the time was kind of tapped like hey can you chair this and I really I grappled with like why would you want me who's in nonprofits to work for or like chair an economic vitality I'm not a small business owner I don't own anything downtown I I have worked for for profits in the past but it never really lasted that long <laughs> so like what can I bring um, it, but it was actually really at a really critical point in time. I was working with the Smithsonian and in some of my day job roles, we were trying to quantify how um, arts and culture can have an economic impact on the community. And so we've actually done some of that work here in Oxford. And so we were bringing a Smithsonian exhibition to the state of Michigan in my day job. And I was kind of drawing these parallels for, you know, economic vitality. You come and see an exhibit okay, what else did you do during that time? Did you stop and eat lunch? Did you visit a store? How can we start quantifying these things? And so I started tying everything back into that. And I looked at the economic vitality, like we follow the Main Street America approach, right? So economic vitality focuses on capital incentives and other economic and financial tools to assist new and existing businesses, catalyze property development, create a supportive environment for entrepreneurs and innovators and drive local economies. And I was like, how can we do that? We're volunteers. Like, I mean, there's, I have a lot of hobbies. So like I used to teach real estate, for example. So realtors, how what haven't you done? <laughs> and so I was like, okay, but I'm not a realtor. Like I can't, we've had realtors on our economic vitality committee, but at the same time, like we're trying, it was just like this weird mix of stuff. So I was really trying to figure out a way to find purpose for the economic vitality committee, like what can we do? So we started setting out like goals, like, hey, what can we do this year? What can we do next month? And then reflecting back at the end of the year, did we actually accomplish them? Because it seems I can't go out there as Ashley Ross and be like, you should build here, person, (laughs) and develop this. I can't do that. But Kelly and Kim can have conversations with folks And the committee can start to have directions and like in some of the instances like, hey, let's do this introduction to the MEDC where they have specific grants and reimbursements and what other types of grants. So like I feel like a lot of that stemmed out of economic vitality to start. And then same thing like with the Stronger Together campaign. You had an idea with Lake Orion. We tied it together. How can we keep this going? Like what else can we do? Okay, we can have a trolley, but what else does that mean? How can we move this forward? Um, so that was my time there. And then obviously I got I got a little busy because I have to do things some and things, stuff. Just some things. <laughs> some things and stuff. 
Um, and so now I am just a committee member, and it's been wonderful. And so I think part of it is seeing that structure go forward and just being very realistic. What can we do in Oxford and what do we want to see? Um, and it's nice just to be a part of the conversation. You know, people complain all the time about what's happening here or over there and not in Oxford ever, but obviously. Of course, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you want to do something, like, you have to be a part of it. If you want to make the change or see whatever, and you, you, you kind of have those conversations. And it's really nice because we have such a gr- good group of people. And I can't speak for the other committees, but I know a lot of folks that are on there too. Like, they're all fabulous people. Yeah. We might not agree on everything, but we kind of have all the same goals in mind. Like, we want Oxford to be thriving and vibrant and to keep that small town feel, that historic preservation, and still have really great businesses and events and locations and things to do. So um, I think just being a part of it and volunteering, that's been pivotal. Yeah, and I mean, it's obvious why we loved that you were on our committee and chairing our committee and on our board from just the way you speak about it and speak about it so passionately. But um, I, when you said that there's so many others on the other committees and you know, a lot of them, it's so interesting to me how diverse everybody's background is and how we have all come from different experiences. Some born and raised here, some moved here, you know, recently, but we do all have that common goal of making Oxford better and where we're going. And it's so wonderful how people do have different backgrounds so they can bring so many different things to the table and you know for you you brought so much into the table from grants and helping us to apply for those and it really kick-started this whole idea of you know okay we're going to take this we're going to create public spaces downtown because if we wouldn't have gotten those grants that wouldn't have never happened so it's crazy too how the committees kind of cross over economic by vitality impacting the other committees in that way. I mean, absolutely. I think there's been plenty of times when we've been sitting around the table with economic vitality and thinking of these ideas or writing a grant. Well, like, don't come to me if you want something designed. Like, absolutely not. Right. Go right. to the design committee. Like, they have it. They know what to do. Um, you know, and so, like, we can come up with all, all ideas and it go it, it works across the board. So, like, if another committee says, hey, I've come up with this, like, but we don't have the funding. Let's go check with economic vitality. Is there some way that we can make this happen? So it's this back and forth, but it's how work I think actually can get done when you have really strong working committees that, you know, do things and make progress. Agreed. And I think that for me coming in just a couple years ago, what I saw the economic economic vitality committee. It is a mouthful, my right? Goodness, I'm having a hard time today. Um, was kind of the benchmark for how a committee yeah. should be run. And I think that was you and how you chose to organize and run the committee. So thank you for, you know, showing us the way to do that because we have modeled the other committees after the EV committee. Um, thank you. I'm very type A. Well, good. <laughs> yes, well, it's between... been very helpful. <laughs> you know, we're missing Grace Carey today yeah, also are. on economic yeah. vitality. And it was really between Grace and Ashley mm-hmm. where I feel like they're like, okay, this is the structure and yep. this is how we're going to do it. And then the other committees were like, okay, we better catch up. Yeah. And, you know, you as the overseer of all of the committees also is kind of nudging a little bit around. I'm being pushed from well, behind the scenes. Well, you are. You are. It's coming down from above. But, um, yeah, but, I mean, honestly, it, it, it has, from, me, from my perspective, it has, all of the committees have really upgraded since when I first started. And so, yeah, it's been, again, just kind of looking at the EV committee and seeing how you've ch- you know, chosen to run it has been very helpful. Well, thank you. But I, I, I also think, like, Grace is doing mm-hmm. a phenomenal job Absolutely. as the chair. Um, and also kind of making a structure that's flexible enough that the other committees can work with it. Yeah. So, obviously, I'm a little bit more rigid in some of my things. And I know other <laughs> committees, like, that's why I'm on economic vitality. Yeah. I learned why because I'm very like you would not want to sit on promo. I was just gonna say that you would oh, be correct. having you would be having a lot of anxiety. Yeah, yes. so you can take the structure and pair it to whatever yeah. is comfortable yes. for that. So I, I think it's all right. Yeah, and just to mention for those listening, Grace was invited to come today and she couldn't make it as she is the current chair for the EV committee, and so she took the reins from Ashley and is 
doing a fantastic job and keeping that up and continuing to make improvements around, you know, one of the things that I thought was really cool that the EV committee did, and maybe you can speak to this a little bit, was the surveys that were done within the community. Absolutely. So Grace really took it, I think, to a whole different level. Um, I have background in uh, evaluation. That's part of my job title is like that impact portion. But Grace was able to use some tools that just made it really easy for everyone to follow along. You know, quick surveys, annual survey, um, but also just on a regular basis, like what are we hearing from the community? So really taking a quantitative and qualitative approach, like Grace was really fabulous at that and saying like, here's what I here's what we heard and then consolidating that data so that the rest of us can be like, okay, I hear that this is what Oxford wants. Let me move forward. Or even having the idea of like who's not responding to mm-hmm. surveys or yeah, you're right. like, Absolutely. she's really good at that too, to say like, Hey, we heard from all these people. These are the typical people who respond, but we didn't hear from these folks over here. And they're yeah. also a part of our community. So how can we start reaching these folks as well? So mm-hmm. I think, Grace has really been spearheading that data. So, like, I think I laid some, like, structural frameworks, and she has taken it kind of to that next level where now let's keep going. What else can we do? Um, And it's been really – it's been nice to see, like, it it just having the feedback from the community and seeing the changes that are actually being implemented from it because we're all survey tired. We all have that fatigue. Like, I don't want want to take any more surveys. I don't want – I don't care if you give me a gift. I don't care anymore. Yeah. Um, and that sounds terrible because that's my job. So please do your survey. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to get the type of response that we have been in hearing, again, it's a mix between the surveys, but also like our social media, our website, like who is looking at what, who, are, what are we trying to find? And the two of you being able to then go and actually implement that because mm-hmm. nothing's worse than like, okay, I, I took the time to do this. And you didn't hear anything. Yes, no yeah. changes were made. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that that contributes very heavily to the fatigue of this, the survey fatigue because when you feel like you're taking the effort and the time to fill that out and then you don't see any of those changes or any changes at all, what's the point? Right? Agreed. And I do think that it was brilliant for, and I think it was this was the whole um, Economic Vitality Committee, but we kept it short and it was really, like a quick five minute survey. And I feel like that was key Mm -hmm. to make sure that people actually were responding Mm -hmm. and going all the way through the survey. Absolutely. And I will say this. So like the DDA is part like a governmental entity, right? Being able to hear feedback and make change. So like Kelly, how long have you been with the DDA? Three years. Three years from what you've heard and to actually see government move as quickly as you have, I think is just a phenomenal, like hats off to both of you because a lot has happened in three years. Yeah. It's been an incredible journey. It's funny that you mentioned it today because we were filling out our main street award nominations today and I couldn't get over three years ago, going back and gathering some of the photos and almost forgetting what it was like and how far we've come because it seems like we're always going a mile a minute and we forget to reflect sometimes. Mm-hmm. But without the committees and the board and the volunteers, none of that would have gotten done. It doesn't matter what director or assistant you have in this position. It never would have gotten done without the team. And I do think everyone's been really committed to that. But I, I, again, it goes back to the surveys, the evaluation. What are we hearing? You know, what's happening? How can we be responsive and not get caught in all of this red tape and like yes. make things happen? Yes, agreed. Have you, are you able to share? And I don't know, this is kind of spur of the moment. So it, can you share any feedback that you heard from the surveys that either we've already taken some steps to implement or are planning to take steps to implement? Yeah, I mean, none of it's secret. It's all like we're all very transparent. <laughs> <laughs> transparent. Well, I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, no, so people overall seem to be very happy. Um, we always have some outliers or, you know, there's some confusion. And I, this just it happens everywhere between the township and the village and what can we do, um, especially because we're trying to create this blended line between the village and the township. Um, that's kind of one of the things that we've been focusing on, too. Like, I don't necessarily want you to see when one stops and one begins. We just want it all to be beautiful and have yes, that same right. beautiful aesthetic. Um, so some of the things that we're always going to hear is M24. Mm-hmm. 
it's always going to be an issue. Um, and it's something that we just have to continuously work on. Um, you know, research has shown that like more stoplights don't actually slow down traffic, right? Mm -hmm. Like they make it (laughs) safer and better and you can continue to go. So we found some, like a lot of the feedback comes to that or we're creating these outdoor spaces. Well, you know, we have, we're the gravel capital. And so it's this mixed message of we want industry. We're the gravel capital, but I don't want gravel haulers driving next to me while I eat my dinner. Right. And so it's this dichotomy and it's not good or bad. Like we have business. We're known for this. That's absolutely critical to our infrastructure. But then we have these other small businesses as well and residents and um, people coming into the community that you know, don't want to hear. And so it's trying to find that balance. So a lot of the feedback, I think, comes from the M24 corridor about safety, non-safe, like just going through that whole entire space. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that we're going to continue to struggle with, but I know that we're advocating with and, you know, people will complain to us, but it's a Michigan highway. (laughs) And, you know, a part of that too is I know that on there was pedestrian safety when Mm -hmm. you talk about M24 and those crosswalks were put in during the M24 project. But the problem is, is that we advocated for the lights to be there, but because of the historic nature of the downtown and with MDOT, you know, they weren't implemented. And that's not to say that we didn't try um, and not to say that we can't try again. I mean, we're always talking about how to increase safety downtown and what we can do from noise to sound barriers. I mean, I feel like this is a conversation every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so in terms of the feedback, I think that's those are areas that we're constantly looking to improve. I think if you just look, I mean, if you drive down there today, like it looks very different than it did three years ago yeah. because we've heard from the town. We're we're doing the best we can. You're never going to make everyone happy. Mm-hmm. That is true. What is very your true. favorite part about raising a family in a downtown? Because you're really, I mean, you're walkable to downtown. Everything's and right yet there. I still drive. <laughs> I mean, but you could <laughs> walk. But I could you walk. Could. Um, so we've, this is actually the second downtown that my husband and I have owned a house in. Um, I love it. I love the amenities. Everything is super close. I can do everything right there. Um, again, I can walk there if I want. I can see the trolley parked. (laughs) Like theoretically just hop the trolley at any point in time. Um, it's for us, I love downtown Oxford. So everyone, there's like a little bit. The spaces are different for everyone. So, like, our house, for example, was built in 1888. So it was one of the first houses in the area. But I have, like, a huge lot for being in downtown. Um, And so I love that we can have those different spaces. And then everyone, like, my neighbors have different spaces, too. And they love it for their own individual reasons. Um, I love the sense of community. I love that, you know, I can get everything I need literally from walking. I most likely I'm still going to drive, obviously. Yeah. But that, that, that's it's my problem, not. <laughs> yeah. It's just because you have kids. Because yeah. you know and how it is stop. with kids. Yeah. Kids stop. Are you from Oxford? Did you grow up in around here? I am a dragon. Oh. <laughs> we don't, were don't, supposed don't. to stay away from that question. <laughs> oh, I didn't get that memo. Oops. Um, so my husband and I both graduated from Lake Orion High School. Um, Kind of did our things. We moved around. Um, But we had, like, this is close to family and so his grandfather has had a house on Clear Lake since 1988 um and so we really just wanted to be close like we're five minutes from our both of our parents um grandparents are close by and so when we were looking for a place to live like where did it fit and work with like where I worked and what I was doing which is also like my day job I'm limited on what I can do, right? Like, that's for sure. plain and simple. Like, mm-hmm. I work in museums. I have to be conscientious of that. So I kind of put myself in this middle space between Detroit and Flint and Saginaw and Lansing that if anything ever opened up, like, I could always be in those spaces. It's all, like, an hour within mm-hmm. that region. Um, but it felt like home. So when we had our first house, which, again, was in a downtown area, I loved the actual house. Um, it was walkable. We'd walk downtown. The downtown was actually even, you know, I think geographically larger than Oxford, but it never felt like home. 
And when we bought our house, I was like, oh my gosh, we're home. Mm-hmm. And that, like, it's this, it's the community. It's not the actual physical space. It is just being there. I, you know, some people hate it when they run into people that they know. But, like, I I have one person that every time I go to Meyer, I see this person. I said, we are on the same grocery shopping schedule. I don't know how this, like, <laughs> I don't know how it works. But, like, I love that. And, you know, I put myself and my family in a space that, we love where they can thrive um and it was very intentional and oxford was that place that's so cool it is interesting from moving around you realize that it's not the stuff it's the people and the feeling that you get but you don't necessarily know that unless you leave sometimes absolutely and i also like so i'm downtown so i don't live on water Mm -hmm. but we are water people. Mm-hmm. And so we're four minutes from the lake house. Like yeah. we, that is an, a requirement. I just think for us, like mm-hmm. being on the water, my son's name is Lake. Like it's Aww. very critical. Like we got married on clear Lake. Yeah. It, it, like that was also a big factor in everything. Yeah. Yeah. We do have it all gravel included. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, going and seeing people everywhere. I, I think it's a benefit. I lived away for five years, um, for a, a job And you don't realize how much you miss, like, a friendly face or a face that you recognize until you don't have that anymore. And it just makes each day better, like, the errands that you have to run and things like that. Now, I will say that my husband does not let me go to Meyer anymore because I never come home because I run into everybody. I see your husband at Meyer. Right? There you go. (laughs) See? There you go. He doesn't let me go. You're not allowed out to many places anymore. No, because we're not allowed to go to dinner in Oxford anymore because my husband, if we're just going out, the two of us, he says, no, because I want time with you and you run into too many people. Mm-hmm. So, and Kimberly is starting to feel this. No. Yes, you are. <laughs> I've seen you starting to run into people. Maybe a little. Yeah. Listen, if you uh, see me in my sweats and the ball cap, like, don't bother me. Yeah. Like, I'm on a mission. Yeah. Like, yes, you saw me. I am there. But, like, Hi. this is yep. this is Ashley you can approach. There is yeah. Ashley that you can't approach. It's <laughs> very obvious. <laughs> Community take note. That's right. <laughs> so one more question just to finish up, Ashley. I am so passionate about being a working mom, and I know you are, too. Tell us how you balance everything, being a working professional, being a mom, you also are volunteering for all these things, a cheer coach. How do you do this and stay sane? <sighs> Tears and beers. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, no, but so I love being a mom. I think it informs everything that I do, but also taking a step back every once in a while and saying no when it's appropriate to say no. And that's really hard, and I think that's a learned skill. Um, but it was something that's why I had to take a step back as well from village council. I was going to miss meetings and the meetings that I was going to make, like I I traveled for work. I was doing all these other activities. Um, and when I was like, if I was going to be home, it'd be like, I'd be flying in and my kids need, need me. Like they're at that age, they need mom. Um, and so really trying to prioritize all of that. And I can still get all the excitement. Like, I can sit on a committee and still kind of get all of that good feel and make, like, know that I'm making an impact without having to be on this and this and this and this. Um, and some gentle reminders from my husband that like, he can't do everything. <laughs> They're so good at that, aren't they? <laughs> We're both married to Trevor, yes. so. Oh, um, goodness. But it's hard. I mean, you know how it is. You're both in the same situation, working, having kids. Um, especially like my kids now are really getting into sports and like that full time schedule. So it's a lot. I don't sleep very much. Yeah, it's a lot. It is totally a lot. Well, <laughs> thank you for coming on. Thank you for your thank service. You. Thank you for being so involved in the community. Thank you. I appreciate you both. And thank you for always making us laugh because that is huge. No, in a good way, <laughs> not in a bad way. In a good no, way. No, you are so I'll fun to, to be around. You. Yeah. It's- <laughs> so fun to be around we love having you come visit and we love having you involved so thank you thank you awesome so speaking of since we're talking about grants today why don't you take a moment and share our grant process and kind of the program that we have and what it's all about um our facade and signage grants and the rear entrance as well and the, uh, you love that one thank okay you. so uh, 
the DDA, Ashley's looking at me funny over here. So the DDA has a grant program where we are able to help businesses with either signage or facade grants to help um, either spruce up their place or when a new business comes in. And I just love the program so much because I feel like it gives the DDA a reason to reach out to that business as soon as they come into town and right away we're offering a helping hand. And I think that that's really been key, especially with our businesses lately. Have you felt that way too? I have. I was going to say, I think it's, you made the comment once and it stuck with me for such a long time, or maybe somebody made it to us, that people that are interested in opening a business in Oxford are reaching out to the DDA before they even purchase or sign a lease. And that kind of really speaks volumes to what we can offer the downtown and what we can offer the businesses. So that was really impactful for me. That was me. What was it? (laughs) But I really do feel that way. I do feel that way. I feel like when people are looking to open up, you know, their American dream Mm -hmm. and they're willing to invest that much money and they're coming to us first to get our opinion of what we think and help to make introductions. I just feel like we know that the DDA is serving its purpose and doing something correctly because it goes back to economic vitality and what we were talking to Ashley about that that is what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We are here to help those businesses thrive and to make a vibrant downtown. Mm -hmm. And I think we're doing it. I think we're, I mean, we can always get better. Of course. We talk about that all the time, but. Which is funny because when you mentioned it earlier about how we don't take time to reflect, it's because we're always thinking about how to improve going forward. Yeah. So we're taking where we're at and always trying to get better. So we don't take the moments to look back. But I think having those side-by-side comparisons is really fun. And I know one of the things we um, focused on for our submissions for the awards is our grant program and our kind of the process that we use with the businesses about giving advice and helping with design and helping to make those connections with the village um, to be able to make that process easier for our businesses. For sure. Because, you know, I hear from so many business owners um, before we were here and kind of streamline that process that it was very difficult to navigate. And here you are, a new business owner, you're trying to open a business you're not quite sure what you're doing yeah. because, you know, you're brand new. And what they didn't want was more red tape. Yeah. And I think that that's where we've really come a long way is that we're helping to cut that red tape all over the place. Yeah. Well, I remember we redesigned the form and yes. the application for our grants. And it went from like 10 pages down to like what they need to submit is like two at this yeah. point. So. Yeah, it was a little startling on how cumbersome that process was. But I think, you know, how many grants have we given over the last couple of years? So over 30 um, to all different businesses. And it's been over $100,000 from the DDA out of our budget, which um, might not seem like a lot over three years. But when you look at our budget per year, we're at about a $450,000 budget. So really 100000 is a lot. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we have more coming up. I mean, oh, we, we do. just met with new businesses last week that are coming in, and it's so cool to talk about their name and sign mm-hmm. and design. And then also being able to link them with vendors that we trust, that yeah. know the process, that they can go get those quotes from and feel comfortable. Yeah. We met with a business this week about their sign grant, and we've had, I think, two or three have reached out to us um, looking for information, looking for space in downtown. So it's, things are, things are booming. Yeah. I wish we could tease some of those out and I know I we know, can't we yet, can't, but no. hopefully it's coming. Yeah. We're really excited about some of those. What else have you been working on this week? Um, so all of those submissions for the awards and I know that, you know, some people are very award driven, some are not, but, I am, but mostly because I want to just like honor the group of people that make these things happen. So when we go back to our volunteers and committee members and board, I want them to understand like what they're doing is so special. So I I know that I put us through a lot of work this week because we've applied. I think we applied for every one of them except for two Mm -hmm. um, that we weren't actually eligible for anyways. And it's because I want people to understand outside of Oxford what we have here and the team that is just incredible because I don't think it's very often that you find a team that works as well as everybody here does. 
Agreed. I was going to point that out is that while we're doing all these wonderful things, we can do that because of the team that we have, right? We did um, one of the award submissions that we did was really a, um, like a montage to our board. And that was, it's very entertaining once we get that all. I'm looking forward ready to, to that go. hitting Facebook. Yeah, I was going to say we'll post it on Facebook so everyone can take a, a look and have a little laugh about it. But it was, um, it was very fun to do this week. Um, and we, it's done in humor, oh, but at the same time, it's because we love them so much and wanted to yeah. honor what they're doing. And they can laugh from it too. That's the best sure. piece. Like if we had a different group of people, there was no way we would be able to do something that silly because somebody might not understand it <laughs> or appreciate it but um so and then we also had interviews for interns this Ooh, week oh yeah I forgot about that one yeah. so I'm excited I can't wait to have our uh interns on this podcast I, I think that will be awesome yes but uh we're pitching out to the board that we want to hire two on because we have so many projects this upcoming summer and I think we've got it down to two candidates and I'm excited to uh, train them and get them in here and also excited for extra hands because yes. it's going to be a busy summer. It is. So more to come on that over the next month, I think, or so. And then you're going to be heading out in two weeks, is it? Yeah, headed out to Alabama for a national conference. Yeah. So we're actually going to record two shows today. Yeah. So we will be wearing the same thing, same my clothes. Lions draft day. I didn't get the memo, you guys. Okay, sorry. My goodness. I didn't wear. I don't. I don't even know if I own anything. Oh, we I need know. to change that. We'll change okay. that. We'll so. listen. Yep. So next okay. week's show we'll have on Scott Cree. He's yep. our design committee chair, and he works for Oakland County and knows a lot about the Main Street program. So I'm excited to interview him. Yeah, that'll be good. So yeah, anything else you want to share? I think that's it. Have a great week. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.